Check one, two. Go! Curious about real estate? Yes! Then you've come to the right place. Get the knowledge you need. Get over the fear and get started. This is the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show with your host, Michael Quarles. Hello, everybody. Michael Quarles with the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show. Welcome to podcast episode 272. Today I have the five questions sent in by you and get you guys and gals, and I'm going to try my best. Here we go. Question number one. What will you do during a downturn when you are not buying houses? Do you still employ an Alex and Wright? No. I, I believe, and we, you know, we're, we, our business is, you know, it goes in cycles, and it's hot and it's cold. Sometimes it's really freezing cold. And so I believe in the water faucet mentality of a business where you create a business that you can turn off and turn on. You can increase the volume of, of deals and you can decrease the volume of deals. But your your life isn't tied to whether you do a deal or not. You know, the, doing the deal, the money that you make is, that's just, that's great. But I, I don't, you know, I don't need it kind of thing. So I have, a, I believe in the water faucet mentality. And when the when it, you can't buy a house, when the houses aren't selling, when it, you know, it's just a bad market, you know, turn it down a little bit. If you want to turn it off, turn it off. But and if you don't need an Alex and a Ryan, you don't need them. You know, the whole concept, as good as my Alex and Ryans are, the Alex and Ryan system is in fact just that. It's a system, and a system when it's working at its best is a system that you can put somebody in who's never done the job or the position the system requires and have that job fulfilled well. So you're not relying upon excellence or outstanding or exemplary individuals. You're relying on on normal people. And in fact, I, I really don't want exceptional people. I want normal people because I know if I have a successful business in normality, with normal, man, I have something. If I have a successful business because I have a really good purchase manager or a really good office manager or or I'm out there and I'm really good at what I do, I really don't have a business. Because if I go away, my business goes away. If they go away, my business goes away. I want a business that takes ordinary people and creates really cool stuff with them through systems. And you you know you have to find your talented people, uh, but it's not extraordinary talent. I'm not looking for Michael Jordan. I'm looking for that 12th guy, that 11th guy, that 10th guy on the basketball team and still win the NBA championship. That's kind of cool. And so that's what the Alex and Ryan system is all about is being able to take and plop someone in. And you know, investors are utilizing it quite a bit. I mean, our coaching program, I mean, they utilize the Alex and Ryan stuff a lot. And I think it's kind of cool because with the Alex and Ryan systems, you can you don't have to like learn everything to do something. Because that's what systems are for. So now water faucet business, turn it down, speed it up. You know, sometimes it's just drip, 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 drip. Sometimes it's you know, like a fire hose. And both are okay as long as you realize that your livelihood isn't based upon something churning, churning, churning. Your livelihood should be based upon bare minimum kind of stuff. And when you make more money, great. But save that money. Put it away. Because, you know, if we spend everything we make, well, what's that going to get us? You know, you, you can't pay your PG&E or your, you can't pay a bill, you know, with an asset unless that asset is liquid. And it's real important to stay liquid especially in the real estate investment business. It's real important to stay liquid. Don't over over leverage stuff. Don't don't be behind leverage so bad that you man you stress yourself out. Become free. That's what it's all about. It's not about, you know, the zeros as long as there's no liability the zeros, those are great. But if the, you know, if you got like 10 zeros there but you have 11 zeros on the other side of the balance sheet, man, who cares? So, we got to be real careful about that. Question number 2. Do Alex and Ryan use the same Skype account? Or do they each have their own account? No, we use a different service other than Skype because we want a more of a commercial type of atmosphere. And because we need to have transferring of phones and recordings and all that kind of good stuff. Skype's really great individually, but at some point you're going to move out of Skype and you're going to move into a more traditional, like RingCentral. I'm sure there's other folks out there that do what they do. 
I just like them. I like the recording ability. I like the, the saving of the data. I like the reporting. I like the fact that, man, I can get a phone number in a lot of different territories. Pretty simple, pretty inexpensively. I just like that kind of stuff. So, um, no, they don't use the same. Thanks for listening. We'll be right back. Are you running out of leads? It's time you tried Yellow Letters at yellowletters.com. Get motivated seller leads through yellow letters, postcards, zip letters, typed professional letters, greeting cards, door hangers, and business cards. Yellow Letters is a full-service marketing company created with your success in mind. Get the personal attention you need to get your direct mail campaign started and get in touch at yellowletters.com. And we are back in three, three, two, two, one. one. Question number three. What's the best way to deal with a house that has the utility shut off for a long period of time? Get the seller or the owner that's selling it to you or the person selling it to you, turn them back on. Because if it's been off more than about six months, and this is, your, you know, you have to check with your local area. But in my area, if it's been off for more than six months, I have to have the utility panel reinspected to have it turned back on because, you know, power company's not going to come back on and put electricity on a panel that's all rusted out, which is, you know, they could be, you know, they could have bad wiring. Someone could get in there and strip something because there was no electricity. So they, you know, no fear of getting hurt. So after so long, you have to have it reinspected. But man, that reinspection could like turn up a lot of negative stuff that won't necessarily be grandfathered in. So what do you do with a house? The best way? Get the power and the gas and the water turned back on. And make that a responsibility of your seller. Question number four. I'm a real estate agent and a newbie wholesaler. Well, okay. I have wholesalers who email me deals all the time. Also have cash buyers looking for deals. Should I co-wholesale these deals or represent a cash buyer as a real estate agent buying these deals? Well, I understand what a wholesaler does. I think you're using the word wrong. A wholesaler buys property low, so they contract it low, they purchase it, so they're actually buying it, and they're selling it for less than full value, typically for a a percentage of potential profit or potential equity to somebody else. So they're not not gonna uh, fix and flip it, they're just buying it, and you know, let's call it, they're buying that $200,000 house for $130,000, and they're buying it for 130, and maybe they're selling it for 140, and that's fine, that's what they wanna do. I think you're mentioned you're talking about a signing, which is, to my scenario, contracting that two hundred thousand dollar house for, for one thirty, and selling the contract, the right to buy it for one thirty to somebody, for ten grand. And if I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do either one of those. If you're a real estate professional, you know the value of that multiple listing service. So why not find a seller that's willing to sell you a two hundred thousand dollar house for one thirty and sell it to the investors out there paying hundred cents on the dollar? And the majority of the investors are. Only a small minority of the investors want to buy discounted property. Yeah, everybody wants to buy discounted property, but there's only a small portion of us that actually go out there to do it on purpose, where the other folks, the large majority of them, they call up a real estate professional like yourself and just buy it for full value. So that's how I would do it. If you're going to be a real estate agent, don't be a wholesaler. Don't be an assigner. You know, work for 6%. There's no liability on your part. Well, there is liability. I mean, I'm not saying that agents don't have liability. I meant there's no ownership ability. So, yeah, I want to do it. Now, I'd love to talk to you and teach you how to hotel. Think about this. Think about buying that thing for 130, selling it for 200. Boy, that's 60 grand. Yeah, you're going to have about eight and a quarter percent costs in there. Three of those. Uh, percentages are, can, can come back to you, and depending on your broker split, you know, you might get all of that. You might get just some of that. So think about that day. And once you have the right to buy something and you don't give that option or is it not on an option, so you're the only one that has the right to buy something, you can now sell it because you're the only one that can sell it. The seller can't sell it. They're selling it to you. No one else can buy it because you'd have an exclusive right to buy. Think about that day. Question number five, what are some items you should keep in your car for property visits and for business in general? Well, well, I didn't, let's talk about the items you don't keep in your car. Trash, you know, personal items that aren't car appropriate, non-professional item. You know, maybe a football, baseball, bat, baseball, baseball glove kind of stuff. That's okay. That's a personal item. I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Things you should keep in your car. Four contracts all the time. Four. Not two. Not one. Four. Blue, blue ink pens. Business cards. 
I think you should have the ugly, uglier, ugliest worksheet in an I buy houses folder with those contracts and just be ready to buy a house in moments notice. There's nothing worse than not being prepared. So be prepared, get prepared. I mean, what's it take? I mean, we buy, we sell those folders on our site at michaelquarles.com. I have a pack of 25 for 25 bucks or something like that. I mean, what's it take to, you know, from a time perspective to make 25 folders in advance, stick four of them in your car, ready to go. So when, you, when you're at Subway sandwich place getting a, you know, club sandwich, six inch on wheat, the guy in front of you says, yeah, and you talk to them and you start talking about real estate. And he says, yeah, I want to sell my house. Been looking to sell it and blah, blah, blah. Go out there and buy a house. Go to the car and say, hey, come on out. Let's, I got some contracts in my car. Let's, let's you know, yeah, do a deal. You know, you got to ask the questions. You got you to gotta know those things. So, you know, but after you know the questions, you know, and the questions are pretty simple. Do you have a house you're hoping to sell? Like you just said he did. Is it listed with a real estate professional? No. What do you think it's worth in today's market? It has to have a number. What do you want to walk away with after I take care of the mortgage? And what's that mortgage balance? If all that totals up 70 cents on the dollar or less, go buy a house. I don't care if you've seen it, not seen it, don't know anything about it, know everything about it, go buy a house. We get we let so many things get in our way because we're not prepared. And being prepared is important. So what do you what do you have in your car? We're gonna go more again. Contracts, business cards, ink pens. I like a tape measure. I like a tape measure, especially if I'm new in the real estate business. A poker, if you're in an area that has a lot of termite issues. We teach all this stuff in our old coaching program. Jump on board if you want to learn real estate. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show. Get more info and stay in touch at michaelquarles.com.